Uh, good morning. Can I welcome everyone to the Justice Committee's 12th meeting of 2015? I ask everyone to switch off mobile phones and other electronic devices. No apologies have been received. Item 1. I ask the Committee to agree to consider a draft Stage 1 report on the Human Trafficking and Exploitation Scotland Bill under Item 4 in private. Thank you. Item 2. Public petitions. We are considering seven public petitions. I will go through each in turn and ask members for views on what, if any, action they would like to take. I will start with PE 1280 on fatal accidents inquiries into Scotland. We previously agreed to consider this petition in the context of the inquiries into fatal accidents and sudden deaths, etc. Scotland Bill. We are due to hear from the petitioner during our stage one scrutiny of the bill. I content to keep the petition open while we consider the bill. Thank you. Uh, PE 1370 calls for an independent inquiry into McGrahy conviction. We have received an update from Justice McGrahy on their latest meeting with Police Scotland and Annex B. They are asking us to consider the principle of appointing an independent prosecutor to consider the forthcoming Police Scotland report. Separately, the SCCRC has asked the High Court for a ruling on the legal status of the victim's relatives to enable it to decide whether they can pursue an appeal on behalf of McGrahy. A date for a full hearing is yet to be fixed. Can I hear if members have any comments in relation to these developments? And I should declare that I am a member for the Justice for McGrahy campaign. John. Thank you, Kavira. I think it is an entirely reasonable request, uh, and I would hope the committee would throw their weight behind it. Clearly, there is the role for the uh, independent QC assisting with the ongoing um, police investigation, and I, I think the reports we've received of that are very, very encouraging. Certainly, Justice for McGrathy Committee seem to have full confidence in Police Scotland, and that's welcome. And I think Police Scotland have said that they will act as honest brokers and uh, thoroughly investigation, uh, investigate the incidents that have been alleged to them in good faith. Of course, it's what happens thereafter that's the challenge. But I would suggest that there already is presence in the system with the, the, the role of the independent QC who is assisting with the police inquiry. Roddy. Uh, a couple of things. Firstly, obviously, in terms of uh, the procedural hearings um, to de determine whether or not uh, uh, a uh, reference to the Scottish Criminal Cases Review Commission can go ahead, obviously, we've just got to, to wait and watch that, and that would be one very good reason for keeping the petition open. In terms of the independent prosecutor issue, I think that we shouldn't be taking a decision on that without making a specific reference to the Crown Office and asking them for their comments. Anybody else? I think my concerns would be whether or not it is competent for the committee uh, to to appoint an independent prosecutor from the committee point of view. So I think I, I concur with what Roddy says about asking for comments from the Crown Office. I'm going to let you back in, John. I'm just giving my views, not summing up. Um, and also, I would suggest that we also ask the government about the competence of appointing an independent prosecutor and what their views are. John. Yeah, no, no, for the avoidance of doubt, I wasn't saying that that was something that was within the gift of this committee. What I was saying is that we should lend our support to that. And clearly, there will be a ro role for the statutory prosecuting authority, which is the Crown Office Procurator for Fiscal Service. Uh, I think um, Roddy's point about the um, SCCRC, uh, um, I, I think that's interesting, but I think it's a separate issue altogether. I think that's not an issue. That's not a problem for us, really. We really have to wait uh, the process and see what happens at a full hearing with sure. regard to that part of the process. Yeah. But quite separately, there's the issue of the Crown and Police and their role throughout the matter. And I think just the view I'm taking is to find out what the position would be about you know, who would investigate, as it were, the Crown Office, how one would go about it. I don't know if it's ever happened. I'm looking around for guidance. No, we don't. So, but Do we not assume that that's part of the ongoing police inquiry? In some respects, the issue is more when the police come to submit their report. The, as things stand, they're submitting it to someone who's already prejudged the situation by intemperate remarks. Somebody else wanting to? Sorry. Sorry, Roddy, you're not shaking No, no, I just, yeah, I just think it's premature. Because we await yeah. the, the police report. But we keep the we keep, we keep. Do you want me to write it and find out about the issue of an independent prosecutor? Whether, in principle, this would be something that could be considered. I think it would be interesting to hear to the, the Lord Advocate's views on that, because okay. clearly, having had a prior involvement in the case, then he won't be able to have any direct hands-on yeah. role anyway in any report that is received. Yeah, and I do think, frankly, some of the Lord Advocate's comments were not helpful uh, during uh, hearings on this petition. Uh, and that may, in some ways, colour whether one was, feels uh, content of a, I hesitate to say, independence of spirit, <coughs> let's say, rather. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to continue the petition. Are we going to write to 
I seek your guidance. Or not um, to wait to the SCCCR, as has reported on the status of the victims. Is that not the key, really? And the well, there's after? two. I think that's not a problem. That's fine. That mm -hmm. bit, I think, is absolutely fine. We just wait for the full hearing. Not a problem for that. We keep it open for that reason. But it's whether we take any action in relation to the independent prosecutor. Could I suggest that we write to the Lord Advocate asking for his views in that position, or alternatively, how, given his personal involvement previously, he would envisage being able to take forward a report presented to Crown Office Procurator Fiscal Service by Police Scotland. Do you want us to make reference to um, some comments that have already been made by the Crown Office? Do you want no, to be as pointed I, as that? I would prefer the request to be neutral. Neutral? Re 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 well, you can relay well, the, the position of the, uh, the, the petitioners, their comments, but without the committee expressing a view on no, it. No, but it's on the record what we've already heard and said. Yeah. So a fairly neutral letter. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That's it. We keep the petition open. Um, PE 1427 on multi-party actions. Correspondence from the Scottish Government responding to the petitioner's concerns regarding withholding of documents is included Annex C of your paper. The Government also included the petitioner in its related consultation. Can I have your views? Would you like to draw the petitioner's attention to the Scottish Government's letter and close the petition or what? Yes. Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. That, is that unanimous? Yes. Yeah, thank you. PE 1479 relates to legal profession and legal aid. Time bar, we previously agreed to keep this petition open until the Scottish Legal Complaints Commission's rule change for a new time bar comes into effect in July this year. Do we just continue the petition? P1501 is in public inquiries into self-inflicted and accidental deaths following suspicious death investigations. We received correspondence from the petitioner responding to issues raised in a letter from the Crown Office and PF Service. The petitioner has also provided detailed information on the need for an alternative review system. Although the FAI bill does not address the issues raised in the petition, it is feasible for the issues raised in the petition to be considered during stage one of the bill. <coughs> Can I have your views, please? I think it goes a bit wider than that. I mean, particularly looking at the supplementary evidence that they provided for us, I think it's a, it does actually go quite a bit further than anything that will be considered with the, the bill. So I don't know whether it's something we need to... Because it, it, there are particular issues in, in the way in which uh, unexplained or self-inflicted deaths are investigated in different parts of the country, and that, that won't be covered, I don't think, at all in the, in, in the consideration of the bill. It's all right, Roddy, I was bringing you. Yes, yeah. Okay, I agree with uh, Elaine on that. I think it is a bit wider, but I also think it, uh, I'm not quite sure if we could ask for information from the clerks procedurally. When would be the next time we would consider this petition in the normal course? Usually at the quarter. Yeah, I, I kind of feel that we might come back to this in three months' time once we've had a proper opportunity to digest it. Are you content we just leave it open, but we don't yes. think it fits within possibly the remit of yeah, the well, fatal accident? Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, PE 1510 and 1511 on police and fire control rooms. We previously agreed to keep these petitions open pending the Audit Scotland report and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service expected in the autumn. We're also due to take evidence on fire reform more generally next week. Alison. Um, since um, in, in the recent past, we've... Um, seen an increase in uh, concern about the, the time taken to answer calls and the capacity of the currently amalgamated control rooms to actually cope. Um, and there's some concerns about resilience. We've seen a number of press reports recently. I just wonder at this kind of midpoint of the reorganisation whether we should seek some evidence from Police Scotland in particular um, on how how they think that the, the, the closures have gone and whether or not they're able to cope with the the pressures. John, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Convener. Uh, I, I, I support Alison's position on that. What I would say that in relation to the, the subcommittee's review of um, local policing, you'll recall that I did suggest that we include call handling, and it was to include the broadest possible consideration of that and how um, Police Scotland's responding. Um, two calls for assistance from the public. Just discussing with the clerks the way forward. I mean, I think we could write in the first instance, but, but you know, raising the concerns uh, to the chief constable. But we could also, I think, the subcommittee on policing deals with local policing in June, when we could put that as part of that in agenda questions. We will also then have had a response at that time from the chief constable. Are you content? Yes. We do that. Okay, okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, 
Now we move, my goodness, uh, we now move on to item three, EU priorities. Uh, it's consideration of response from Minister of Community Safety and Legal Affairs in relation to our EU priorities. Roderick, it's your cue. If you want uh, well, to say I a few words on the yeah, Minister's I don't think response. I've got very much to add beyond what's uh, in the Minister's letter. Obviously, we, we don't have the updated action plan on European engagement. Um, I think the other matters are fairly well set out. The only thing I would perhaps uh, mention is that the European agenda on migration, in the right of recent events, uh, that might be something that uh, the European Commission will be looking at further, uh, I would have thought. Uh, um, we specifically asked about its kind of correlation implications for the human trafficking bill, um, which I don't demur from the government's comments on. But so, so other than that, I would say it's probably just something we would note um, as a committee. Say anything? Simply no. Yes, sorry, Rod, sorry uh, Christian. No, I, I would agree with uh, Rod Campbell about that. I think a lot of it will be rewritten after what happened this week. I think uh, there will be a different tone, maybe, into the, um, the engagement with the EU regarding particularly what's happening in the Mediterranean. I think, I think, given the horrendous events that have happened recently, that mm -hmm. our focus, um, perhaps the committee wants to consider at some point a, a more robust focus on the European agenda and migration. Um, and look at the, the main areas for possible human rights on a common asylum system, new policy and legal migration, fighting irregular migration and human trafficking more robustly, and securing Europe's external borders. It seems that this is something that, as the Justice Committee in Scotland, we want to perhaps really begin to put our weight there. It's up to you. Is um, there any way we can do this, Roddy? Is there any way in, in communicating back? Um, uh... Well, I think it's kind of a, a moving piece. It's something that we might want to just pay attention to in our work programme, but also consider, uh, um, you know, what other other work other committees in this parliament might want to do on this issue. Um, do we want to ask the European Committee well, that's whether what I'm they? About. Yes, yeah. are you on the European, you're yeah, on the European yeah. Committee as well? But we will formally, apart from you, I mean, you as our yeah. messenger, we will formally write the European Committee. I think we would have concerns that. It, it, it's not just a simple matter of a, a, a traffic and exploitation bill. There's far, far more yeah. required in practical and pragmatic terms to be done um, with regard to this. If you're desperate, you're desperate. You're not paying any attention to any bill that anybody puts in place. Um, so we will write and ask the European Committee whether they're addressing this issue. We would like to keep our eye on this as well. Thank you very much. Um, and I do know that Alison Johnson has a topical question on that today, which... I put down as an FMQ wasn't selected, but there we are. Um, so did you. There we are. Roddy and I in competition. Uh, that's fine. Thank you very much. We'll now move into private session.